What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Scale News update for your Monday. This week I am filming out at Folsom Lake. We're doing a little bit of crawling before the Super Bowl and just having a little bit of fun. Decided that I might as well shoot the Scale News update while I'm out here. Again, it's been a super busy week, so let's jump into the topics. A lot of what we saw this week was basically just details being released on the things that we've talked about already. RC4 Drive got us all of the details on that JD Models Dakar rally truck. It is based on basically Tamiya 1 14th scale uh, size parts and things like that. The price really is not that bad for what that thing has inside. Overall, if you're a Dakar fan and you want something super scale, it's a great truck for you. And the price, not nearly as bad as I would have guessed from my initial look at something like that. You can find all of the details in the link in the description. And for all of you guys watching on Facebook, again, the links are in the description on the YouTube video. So if you're looking for any of the links that I talk about, check it out on the YouTube video. Everything you'll find is going to be there. So the Nuremberg Toy Fair was this week over in Germany. We're seeing a ton of different little things come out of that event. We're getting another look at that Traxxas Bronco body that's supposed to come out soon. Before it was looked like it was only going to be an option body available in two pre-painted colors. But now we're maybe getting word that it might come as an RTR with the 2.2s and that long arm, which is basically a lift kit. So it looks like they're probably pandering more towards a group that is more interested in running through mud than trying to do anything technical off-road. Traxxas knows their markets probably would be a good seller if they sold it that way, but I'm guessing we'll still see that body set as an option in those two pre-painted colors that we saw before. And a little plug of my own, I released the Honcho taillight set that I designed for the Honcho budget build. It's on Shapeways now as well if you're looking to change the look of the rear end of your Honcho. While not scale off-road, something that did pop up that I actually do kind of like the looks of is the new Charisma V. <laughs> Looks like a fairly cool looking on-road car. Not scale off-road and I have no idea the platform, the durability, or really anything about Charisma. The only thing I've seen from Charisma before is the Coyote, which overall, when I had it in my hands, I didn't love it. Uh, but maybe the V's got a little bit better look and feel than that coyote did as far as when I held it. And this week is King of the Hammers, so if you're an off-road fan like I am, I'm sure uh, a lot of us will be glued to the live streams. If you've never watched the KOH live streams, they're pretty awesome. I'll post the link to where to watch those in the description below. Definitely uh, going to be watching those as far as you've got qualifying with power hours. Those are a great show to watch. Then, of course, the big races uh, on Friday. Really looking forward to this year. Everyone is throwing down some pretty awesome new cars. Can't wait to see what the outcome of this year is. You have to put your vote in, solid axle or IFS again. IFS has really been killing it these last few years and those cars are really evolving. And then we've got trophy trucks. Kraken released the information on their one fifth scale new gas trophy truck. That thing, pretty good looking. Looks like the retail on that thing is going to be $17.99. It's got a 29cc four bolt engine, comes with a tactic radio and receiver. I think all you need to do is add your battery, your own charger, and you can run with that. Uh, it does come with the Kraken high volt servos. The body in general looks super scale, pretty well proportioned overall. When Kraken first released their Vectra, that thing wasn't all that well proportioned with the wheels and tires they had on it until later on when they got that Maxxis li licensing and we were able to put the Trepidors on there. At that point then, that truck started to look pretty good. So it looks like Kraken is on a little bit of a roll and they're going to be releasing more scale trucks. If I had any comments about the Kraken, it would be that their rear axles just are lacking. They don't look scale. I think if they fixed that area, made that design a little bit better, they could really up the overall appeal of that truck because a rear axle can really be something you see and notice on a truck. And when it isn't as scale and fitting as the rest of the truck, it, it just throws it off for me. That would be my only comment about those Kraken vehicles. And then we had the biggest release of the week and that was the new Traxxas Unlimited Desert Racer. You know, it's a trophy truck, but they're not calling it a trophy truck. It's not score licensed. It's 1.7 scale or 1.7.5 scale. But the reason for that odd scale actually is they kind of went into it. It is what they're calling pro scale, which means that they're actually going off the scale of a real vehicle. And I can appreciate that. You know, I thought that them calling it this weird scale was just gonna be some weird Traxxas thing again, but they're actually going with what the true scale of the vehicle is, and I can appreciate that. I'm not an all-out Traxxas fan, but I really do like what they're doing with this truck. 
Uh, the scale details they put in this thing are pretty incredible. Everything from the cage details, the suspension in general, uh, the front A-arms are very close together in the center even though it is a four-wheel drive. It doesn't have that super wide front bulkhead taking up a bunch of real estate in there. It looks like they did a great job with that. It's got dual shocks all the way around for scale looks, a trailing arm rear suspension, the rear axle has got something a little bit uh, different than what we've seen before. It has a planetary gear reduction on the pinion side of the ring and pinion. And so that should help take and move some of the reduction from out of the center gearbox and move it towards the rear. Now I'm sure that they had to adjust something in the front with a different gear set. But what taking some of that reduction out of the center is and moving it to that rear axle is it should allow that rear axle to stay more planted rather than having to fight a bunch of torque twists. So that rear axle should be able to follow the terrain better and let the suspension work more rather than having that power move that axle around. What that should lead to in the end is an axle that looks more realistic in video. That whole car should hopefully stay a little bit more level than what you're maybe used to seeing out of a high power 6S car. The rear sway bar in that car is high mounted just like you'd see in a real trophy truck. They've got scale details molded all over as far as shock reservoirs, batteries, spare fluid containment, uh, boxes like you would see in a real one. A interior very similar to what we've seen on a lot of cars nowadays as far as like a half depth molded interior and just the body overall looks fantastic. Overall I'm a big fan of this car. Price is looking somewhere between $799 and $750 so it puts it right in the range of the Losi Super Ray which is going to have some pretty stiff competition with this car I would think. But we'll have to see how the size of the Super Ray really compares to this Traxxas 1 7 scale once they're side by side. I'm sure we'll see that soon though. So not a ton of topics for the week, but some interesting ones nonetheless. I'm gonna get back to crawling and enjoy the rest of my Sunday before the Super Bowl. If you're into sports, I hope your team wins. If not, it's KOH week, but for the rest of the day, I'm gonna get back to crawling. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you on the next one.